Fortunate to have Dr. Baron Clower here today. Um, he studied computer science and physics at the JW Goethe University in Frankfurt, and he earned his MSc in 1990. He received his PhD with a dissertation on parallel pattern recognition methods in 1995. After leading a research group on parallel computer architectures, he received his habilitation degree in 2004. He followed a call from the University on the Federal Armed Forces to chair the Department of Technical Computer Sciences as a professor in 2004. So I got in the same year then. So he's a member of the German um, Electrical Engineering Society, the German Computer Science Society, and he leads a collaborative special interest group on physics and computer science. So from the Helmut Schmidt University in Hamburg, Dr. Bernd Klauer. Did you hear it? Well, thank you, Professor Gibson, for this kind introduction. Uh, well, the my talk security by hardware. Um, well, before I go to my talk, I would like to uh, introduce my uh, the concept for my talk. Uh, first of all, I will say a few words about uh, what is IT security. Um, then I will talk about uh, the threats that we are facing today. Uh, I will talk about a classification approach for malicious code, what really is malicious code, how does it threaten us, and how to, def how to defend against that malware. Then uh, I will introduce a security optimized computer architecture, and I will give a brief view into the future, what will be the future threats, and uh, I think this will be malicious hardware. Uh, Professor, Professor Richter asked me to prepare for a very heterogeneous audience, so all of you are experts, some in computer science and some of you in other areas. So, first the question, um, what is IT security? It's me who has to told the talk today, but uh, you allow one question to be asked by you. What do you think? What is IT security? Okay, things not being corrupted or stolen. That's one important issue. What do you think else? Okay, I have some proposals. IT security. The thing is availability. You want that all your things are not stolen, your machines and your data. You want that it is available and that it is not only available, probably as such a memory stick. You want to have your data when you need it, and uh, you don't want it to be stolen, and you want its integrity. So you don't want anybody to change your data, or only if you authorize someone to change the data, then it can be changed. Well, um, another issue is uh, confidentiality, authenticity. Uh, if you receive a message from anybody, then you want that really the, uh, the author who has signed this message is really the author. And liability, for example, if you buy something at eBay, then you want that uh, the person really sends you what you have bought and the other person wants that you uh, pay for the goods that you receive. You want, uh, this is that this transfer really, um, really happens. Confidentiality. Uh, you want that only those persons can see your data uh, which who are authorized to see it. And you want all those features for all items from the domain of information technology. Well, um, what are the main threats? against those features that I've presented. What do you think? What is the main problem in IT security issues? Yes. The user. The user is the main problem and 
Um, where's the problem exactly? The problem is located exactly here. Well, then we have errors in hardware and software, which can um, threaten uh, the things that, that I've mentioned. Um, act of God is also something that uh, threatens our IT security. Um, malicious acts, threats from the internet, people who are threatening your machine via the internet, um, and malware. We have here malicious code, uh, all things like viruses, trojans, and so on. And uh, what I think is coming soon, malicious hardware. But I will come back to this later. Uh, I will focus my talk on uh, the last issues here, on malware, malicious code, and uh, later on, on the malicious hardware. Um, Next thing is, uh, I would like to classify um, what malicious code really is. And uh, we have uh, certain classes of code. This classification is from uh, Joanna Rutkowska. Um, there is an interesting uh, address, um, www.invisiblethings.org. There you can read uh, lots of papers on uh, this classification and on uh, typical viruses uh, from this classification. Well, the easiest uh, type of malicious code is a malicious application. Uh, if we have here the operating system and we have several programs running on our machine, then there can be uh, a process which is completely malicious code. Uh, this seems to be the easiest class, but uh, to fight this code is not so easy because um, imagine you have, we have so, um, an application here like uh, PowerPoint and uh, the malicious components have been put into this code by Microsoft. Probably they want to spy out our system, they want to look what we are doing on it, they want to have access to uh, the data. Then we have that type class, uh, that class zero code. Um, which cannot be identified uh, as malicious code. But uh, there are lots of uh, programs that are mal uh, with malicious behavior which are very well known. And for those uh, applications we have um, so-called, um, I call them anti-X agents, software that detect malicious code and can uh, remove it from our systems. And uh, well, the anti-X coverage for those type of malicious code uh, is good for those programs which are known uh, for their malicious behavior, but not for those programs where the malicious behavior is covered by uh, the software producer. Okay, then let's come to class one code. Um, class 1 code distinguishes from the class 0 code that we have a, a standard application and there is a certain part of malicious code that comes into this code by infection. So that it is not programmed into the code from the manufacturer. Um, it, ha it comes to into this section here by uh, any kind of infection. And uh, for this type of uh, malicious code, we have anti-X coverage, like antivirus or other programs that can, uh, um, well, like uh, McAfee's and so on. We can have the same problem with malicious code in the operating system. There can be malicious code here. This is also a class one code, um, which comes into the operating system by any kind of infection.